And Moses said, look, don't fear, for God hasn't come to test you that his fear may be for you so that you may not sin. So it's about the fact that he expects you to be reverent of him. You are God's holy people. You do not need to fear God, but you need to respect his might and his power and the fact that he can actually cast body and soul into hell, not just deal with the spirit. He can't just kill he can't just kill the body. He actually can kill the body and the soul. He can destroy us completely if he wanted to, but we are God's people. So we don't need to fear God in that way, but we need to have that healthy respect. There is an element of fear in that healthy respect that says that God is all-powerful, almighty, and that we need to respect the fact that he is who he is, that he is God. And so these people, the Israelites, they had the privilege of seeing God move. And, you know, the, the funny thing is that if we really pay attention and if we give God all the glory that we can also see God move today. It's whether we're actually expecting God to move. And, you know, this today is a, is a healing service. And uh, at the end of the service, we will be calling people forward for healing. And we will see God move. If we expect to see God move. Is God here today? Has he suddenly, miraculously decided that... Mm, Shall I turn up on Sunday to St George's or not? Well, we should know that if we are God's people, and each of us as born-again believers will be temples of the Holy Spirit, wherever we set our foot, God's there with us all the time. And God's here with us right now. And so it's a question of moving into that. God was there with the people all the time, but suddenly... There were thunderings, there were lightnings, there were sounds of trumpets, the mountains started to smoke. And suddenly when God shows up, sometimes things happen. People start to talk in tongues. People start to find miracles happen. Sick people get well. All sorts of things happen, but we have to believe that this almighty God is here all the time and we are literally just a moment of moving into his presence by the expectation and our faith reaching out to expect God to be here. If we don't expect God to be here individually, then he may well not show up for us. So we have to be prepared to search God out. We have to be prepared in faith to, to step up, out and, and to move forward and to come forward to touch God in our understanding, in our faith. That's what we need to do to really get involved in anything that we feel God, we want God to do for us. We need to be prepared to exercise our faith. Then we come into Isaiah. And Isaiah again talks about the vineyard. He talks about this vineyard. And also, it says in verse 2, the end of verse 2, it says, So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. And so God... Because God is God, God has a right to expect fruit from us. So that's the thing today. That's what it's saying to me today is about what's happening in our lives. When God speaks to you today and, said, and says to you, where's the fruit? What can you say? Are you able to say, well, worked for you. I've brought forth fruit. I've, I've brought other people to you. I've spoken about you to other people. My life is 
is different because of you. I've changed my act. I'm starting to follow your ways. I'm learning to love people and I'm learning to love you and I'm building a relationship with you and therefore my life is changing. Can you say that today? Is that something that God is really impacting on you and you coming to the point where there's some fruit and we go into the New Testament and we can talk about the fruits of the Spirit. And so we need to be aware of what's really going on in our lives. Is there fruit? Or are we still wild grapes? Are we still going our own way? Because God has a right to expect fruit because he is God. God created us. God made us. We are the vineyard that he tended, that he created. Because what happens if, if we continue along the path of, of being wild grapes, of not really coming into subjection to God and, and following God and trusting God for our lives and bringing forth fruit, he says, now let me tell you what I'll do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it shall be burned and break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I'll also command the clouds that they won't, they don't even put rain on it. So there's no chance because we know that the rain and the sunshine is what makes things grow. So once there's no rain, forget it. What's going to happen? It's going to be like a dust bowl. And so this is what he's saying about the vineyard. So it comes with responsibility that there must be some fruit coming from it. Otherwise, what's the point? Otherwise, we're just meeting here as a holy huddle, like many other churches, and no fruit coming from it. Then we have to say, what are we doing? Are we just...